Patch Patch. Night gathers, and now our podcast begins. It shall not end until we're done talking. We are the princes that were promised. Welcome to the princes that were promised. It's me, it's Shawnee One, and with me as always is John. And John, today, well, I'm sure every day, but today in particular, you're taking a little bit of issue with the big cheese himself, the father of modern fiction, America's modern day J.R.R. Tolkien, the greatest fucking guy that ever lived and a frequent guest at the Television Academy Awards, sometimes writer. George Martin, you seem like you're extra, can I say, angry at him today? I am. I'm just thinking the past couple weeks about, you know, what is it? The Sons of the Dragon? Is that the book that's coming out first? What's it called? The Sons of the Dragon was a piece of history, which he he called the Sons of the Dragon. It was something he wrote for the World of Ice and Fire Encyclopedia, Mm -hmm. as was uh, The Rogue Prince, which was about Prince Daemon Targaryen. Princess and the Queen, the Blacks Mm. and the Greens. Mm -hmm. These were all giant pieces of history that he wrote for the World of Ice and Fire, and it had to be cut for reasons of length. So he he released them, not even, he hasn't even released them like every year. It's been like every other year. His big release will be a little bit of shit that didn't make the encyclopedia, which he shouldn't have fucking been working on in the first place. So as it turns out, he's got a whole bunch of other shit that he's been working on originally for. The World of Ice and Fire, which don't get me wrong. I mean, you like The World of Ice and Fire, right? Yeah, I didn't. I, didn't, I haven't finished yet. No, nah, but it's cool. You know, it, it's, it's cool, cool, but it's like it's been. We've said before, and just like you do, finish the books first, then you do a, a right. overview of the whole entire story or something. Right. When you're done with the story and you want to cash in on it again, you do an encyclopedia. You do some short stories. You don't try to cash in on your property before you're done with your property. So, the release for 2018 is going to be called. Fire and Blood. Okay, that's that's what it was called. Right, and he's going to have Fire and Blood Part 1, Fire and Blood Part 2, and it's going to be all supplementary material that did not make the cut into the world of Ice and Fire, but he's not done with it yet. And originally what he said when he started talking about Fire and Blood was, you know, maybe one will be done for 2018, maybe both will be done for 2018, A Boy Can Dream. That was his original statement on the matter. But now, and we went through this in one of the news episodes, that the comment chain on the world famous not a blog sidebar real quick i don't know if this will also make you angry live journal right live journal is the host for not a blog mm-hmm, mm-hmm. live journal is owned by some russian company and george r. r martin is basically one of the only americans that actually writes on live journal i know he's been talking about moving not a blog to a different host but he's yet to do so stupid sidebar But anyway, what he's saying now is that Fire and Blood Part 1 will be out in 2018, and then The Winds of Winter, and then Fire and Blood Part 2. And this makes me angry because, yeah, I'm interested in Fire and Blood, but at the same time, I'm not fucking interested in Fire and Blood. Like, at all. I'm not not interested. I'll buy it. I'll read it because I fucking want to read about Westeros. I am not going to buy it, and I will not read it. Nice. I applaud your gumption and your willpower. And I am not as strong. You will talk about it on a podcast and I will listen to the... <laughs> My review. Of it and I will... that Well, then that's how I will read it. All right, fair enough. I will not buy it. I will, I will not give him any money until he publishes The Winds of Winter. He has lied to this fan base. He said a couple of years ago that he's not going to work on anything else. Yes. He was... All he was going to do was work on The Winds of Winter. And he lied and lied, and lied, and I'm tired of it. At least at first, he went through the trouble of trying to cover his lies by creating aliases such as Gardner Duvois, <laughs> so, that, so that when his fucking extracurricular bullshit came out, at least you wouldn't think it's by him, We, you know, but... <laughs> Gardner Duvet, who looks similarly to George R. R. Martin. <laughs> Uncanny. Like that's, that's like his brother. He's just using it as the picture. 
<laughs> no, it's like it's like when Bobby Valentine came out with the fake fucking glasses and uh, mustache. That's just his brother. He's using his name. It's really him that's doing the writing. He... <laughs> Unbelievable. Gardner Devois. The biggest farce in the history of American fiction. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he made these statements saying that he's committed to getting the winds of winter out. I see no commitment. He's not even lying. He's not even giving us the good grace to respect that he told us one thing. Now it's just like, he like retconned everything he said, and he's going in a totally different direction. And it's frustrating. He's just pissing all over the fans. So let me ask you, will you ever get to a point where you're so angry that you don't buy the winds of winter? No, but here's my thing. And we've discussed it so many times. Ad nauseum. Right. Next year, we're going to find out what happens in this story. Yes. And as you said in one of our podcasts, people today, they want the quick satisfaction. Right. So they see, why should I read it? All right. Know what happens. Why should I read this? The Brian Silks of the world. Can't imagine that he's not going to lose a lot of money on this. Well, see, the thing is, is... He's getting it from HBO. That's how he's making he's, it. He's got so much ridiculous money. Honestly, he probably makes more money each year, even though he hasn't put out a book. Because he gets more and more of his, his back catalog. His older properties are now being... The rights are being sold to be developed into TV shows, into films. And he's got a lot of writing. He's got a lot of novellas, books, short stories. He's got a ton of it. He really does. Personally, I've never read anything else that he's written other than a novella called Shit. I don't even remember. It was definitely good, but I felt like I was reading A Song of Ice and Fire. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just a, a different setting. I think it was, I believe it was The Future. The fuck was the name of this short story? I'm not taking away from it. Uh, in the House of the Worm by George R. R. Martin. And I only checked it out because I, I was on iBooks and it was like 99 cents. So I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll check it out just to see what his other writing is like. And it was pretty good, but the same, same style of a so- as A Song of Ice and Fire. And that's the thing with writers. You can have a favorite author, but how many of, of their books can you read before it all becomes the same story with a twist? You know, And it's hard. You read one Stephen King story, I feel like you, you read them all. So you look at A Song of Ice and Fire as one gigantic story. It's so popular right now. The guy responsible for it has this huge back catalog. Why not? Why not make it all? into TV shows and movies. It, it obviously works for Game of Thrones, you know? So he's making, and I don't know for sure, but I, I have to believe that he's making more money each year as the viewership for Game of Thrones goes up. I mean, he is an executive producer on that. And as merchandise for Game of Thrones gets sold because he gets a chunk of that and his other properties are being optioned. He gets money for each one of those. Every time Game of Thrones airs, he's getting a little bit of change. You know what I'm saying? So do, do you disagree? Do you think there's any way that he made less money in 2017 than he made in 2016? He's got to make more because the more they make, I'm sure he gets a bigger cut, right? You would imagine. Yeah. Dude, I would think that even the year that A Dance with Dragons came out, and I don't know which one of the five books from A Song of Ice and Fire, I don't know which one has sold the most overall. But I do know that when A Dance with Dragons was released, it initially sold the most, right? So as soon as it was released, it was on the New York Times bestseller list, debuting at number one. I think Feast for Crows also debuted at number one, but A Dance with Dragons more so, with more sales. But even that year, which was 2010 or 2011? 2011. Even with a bestseller, I'm sure he made at least twice as much money in 2016 probably thrice as much in 2017 mm-hmm. than he did in 2011 with the New York Times bestseller. So if you look at the math of profits just for this fucker, does it even pay for him to be working on this book or does it pay for him more to be fucking sleezing his way around Hollywood, rubbing fucking elbows with these asshole producers and studio heads to get his back catalog, which is already written, he doesn't have to do any work, to get that option for TV and film. It pays more for him to do the latter. So then what's the reason to even finish A Song of Ice and Fire? Right. Well, you know, I just thought, uh, you know, I'm getting paid regardless, so why should I finish this book? I don't have to explain myself to you anymore. I guess if I put myself in George Martin's shoes, the reason I would have to finish A Song of Ice and Fire would be legacy, would be 
to fucking finish something I started to know that long after I'm dead and buried, I left something that made the world a more enjoyable place. And I told a story from start to finish that enthralled and captivated a huge audience. And if those reasons aren't motivation enough for this guy, then yeah, well, I mean, we'll never, there's no reason that we'll ever get the winds of winter. He still says winds of winter, fewer and far between does he mention the winds of winter, but he still says the winds of winter. So he wants us to think that he's working on it. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you though, John, if he came out tomorrow and he said, you know what? I'm not going to do it. Not going to do it. Not going to finish this book. I got too much other stuff going on. I'm an old man. I want to relax. I want to enjoy my money. Not going to do it. I wouldn't be surprised. Wouldn't be surprised. But would it affect your enjoyment of Game of Thrones? No, because at this point, just get to the ending. I don't think it would affect mine either. I think I would still be just as excited for the final episodes, still just as interested to see how this story ends for these characters. I would be more upset only because of certain things of the book purists who, who still do watch a show that say things are going to be different in the books yeah. than it is in the show. Then they would still go on with that and there would never be confirmation from George. You know, just go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Oh, so you, you're saying you would be more upset that certain sections of the fandom that are just not being reasonable... Well, the books are going to be different than that. Right. That's just the show. The show is just playing fan service. So you're, you'd be more upset that they'll never be proven wrong and they can always use that as a crutch. Right, right. More so than that you'll never get to read yeah. the actual ending to the book. And I can, underst- I can understand that, man, because you'll get the ending in Game of Thrones. It may be different than what George would have written, but it's going to basically be the same, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, do you think that Benioff and Weiss are going to have a different character sit the Iron Throne than George? No. Because they would, they, would, they would put that character in there. I think that's the most frustrating part for me, honestly. I like to think, I mean, I I am a patient, I am a patient man. I know I am, for the most part. There are times when I'm not, but I like to think that I'm patient enough that if there was no Game of Thrones, I wouldn't mind this weight as much. Because I think for me, it's the fact that, it's not even the fact that Benioff and Weiss are finishing this story, because not for nothing, at this point, they deserve to finish the story more than George R. R. Martin deserves to finish the story. But for me, it's that I was enjoying these books so much, and I'm not going to enjoy them as much knowing how it ends. Mm-hmm. Knowing that Shireen is burned is going to make me enjoy The Winds of Winter less. Knowing the mystery surrounding Hodor is going to make me enjoy The Winds of Winter less. Whatever the third twist is, and I think we talked about it once before, thinking that the third twist involves Bran and the Night King, but if that's the case, we will see that next season, right? Yeah. I mean, if George gave a three twists, they're going to use all three twists. But knowing whatever that twist is, that's going to make me enjoy it less also. Right. You're going to see it coming, like, oh, oh, this. You know what I feel about what's going to happen with the books? I think when we're reading them, I think we're going to, like, as we're reading it and as we're expecting things that we know are going to happen because of the show, Mm -hmm. we're going to see some of the subtle differences come through. We're going to start reading them like, oh, that's why the show did it that way. Oh, the show used that character instead of using this character to do this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay, okay. You know what? I'll go a step further with that, John. I think with the way the Song of Ice and Fire fandom is, right? So we're talking about people who who enjoy this enjoy these books so much that they had, from what I've read, from what I've heard, readers had R plus L equals J figured out by the end of A Game of Thrones, before mm-hmm. Clash of Kings was even published. So you're talking about a fandom that can figure these mysteries out, that can somehow connect these dots by reading between the lines. I would think that the differences between how the show ends everything and how George R. R. Martin ends everything I would think that the fandom would have it all, they'd have it all figured out before the books come out anyway. Kind of like how you're able to to realize that Fagin's arc, whatever it will be for Winds of Winter, Dream of Spring, Ben F. and Weiss have shifted that over to Cersei. 
it wasn't the veil that saved the day in the Winds of Winter. It will be Jon Snow and the Wildings. I have no proof on that. That's just... No, you don't, but you're able to figure these things out and they make so much sense. And if you talk to another knowledgeable, let, let's say that you know Brendan Blackfish, right? I forget what the fuck his, uh, his blog mm-hmm. is, um, or, or Elio, people will be able to figure these things out because they, they have read and reread A Song of Ice and Fire so many times. They're going to be able to make the connection between what happens, how the show ends things, what happens, and where George is at with the book and the characters and how it will equate to what happens in the books, what the difference will be, what, what plot lines are put on other characters, what story arcs go to different characters. I would think everybody would have it figured out, to be honest with you. So that's what's most disappointing right. you're, for me. You're, you're, you're definitely going to see a lot of people going to connect the things based off the show. And you, you, I'm sure you're going to see, like, you know, podcasts and YouTube videos like, hey, where this kind of left off and Dance of Dragons and what we see in the show and how this show ended, this is what's going to happen. Because we know that the ending, we know that that's granite. That's a rock. That's mm-hmm. how it ends. And when I say that, I mean, Who's left? Who's sitting on the Iron Throne? At least for the major characters. So it's all a question then of working backwards. And even places where the show has diverged from the books. And I would say, I guess it's season four where they really started diverging, right? Season five, really, is when they... Yeah. And they said, I I was just reading, watching a YouTube thing, uh, interview on them. And they said they knew back in season five how they are... They knew already what was going to happen in season six. and what was going to happen in the end, like what the end game was. So everything they did, they planned it. I mean, this they planned their story with what they knew to, f- you know, to fit everything to go to the end. I think I tweeted it. I don't know. I definitely said it to Carolyn. I think it was after the Hard Home episode. Oh, no. You know what? No, dude, it was before that. It was during season four. And I think it was after the season four premiere, after Two Swords, right? That was the name of season four, episode one, Two Swords? Uh, yes. After... That episode aired, I said, you know what? Benioff and Weiss are now better at writing A Song of Ice and Fire than George R. R. Martin is. I felt that episode was so well written. If these guys can do that based on a brief overview of the story that you gave them, how the fuck can you not finish your own story? It's your right. story, bro. Yeah, you talk about the Marinese not. Okay, I get it. I get it. You need certain people in certain places for certain things. But you've negated that over the last fucking, what are, what are we at now, seven years since? It's going on, yeah. Sure, it's, we'll be at seven years in this summer. Well, did it come out in March or May? Did it come out in May 2011 or was it March 2011? I think it was okay. May. I think it was May that it came out. That's when it was published. So he was finished with it before that. God, I can remember back in like 2013, laughing at people saying, oh, this book's not going to come out until at least 2017. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Stop being so negative, you know? <laughs> Yeah, there's no way that it's going to take them that long. And then you look at the, the weight between Feast for Crows, Dance with Dragons, and you say like, oh my God, I don't know how these people waited that long. I don't know how they did it. When you started reading, I think you watched season one, right? And then you, you started reading or season one and two, and then you started reading? Season one and two. I remember thinking when I finished the Dance with Dragons, and I'm glad the, the, the big long wait is over because there's no way the Winds of Winter is going to take as long as between Feast for Crows and Dance with Dragons. It's amazing, amazing how, how how long it's taking. And it's going to probably be eight years, 2019. Working on other fucking projects, bro. Like, fuck him for doing that. And it gets to a point where, like, yeah, okay, he doesn't have to finish it. He doesn't have to do anything. It's America. He doesn't owe us anything. Fine. George R. R. Martin is, who's the asshole that says it? George R. R. Martin's not your bitch. Neil Gaiman, right? Neil Gaiman's another writer. He created Sandman the comic book, and he wrote American Gods, which just became a TV show. And he put out the famous tweet or quote that said, George R.R. Martin is not your bitch, meaning get off his case about finishing the Winds of Winter. No, because this is before Dance of Dragons. He said, get off his case about finishing a Dance of Dragons. He'll finish it when he finishes it. And yeah, you're right to a certain degree. But at this point, fuck you, Neil Gaiman, and fuck you, George R.R. Martin. Because it's one thing... To write yourself into corners mm-hmm. and to be unable to finish a story you're telling, it's another thing to take on other projects that you're making a ton of money off of and to continue to put on the back burner what we've been waiting for, what you and I have been waiting for since 2011. Some motherfuckers have been waiting for it since A Game of Thrones came out. Like, there's some people that have read this book since 1996 when A Game of Thrones came out. Can you imagine 
Those poor bastards for over 20 years have been waiting for this series to finish. And now not only is it going to be finished on TV, but honestly, who the fuck knows if we'll ever get A Dream of Spring? Every day it looks less likely that we'll get it. It's taken eight years between, you know, it looks like it's going to be eight years for Winter Winter. What, so you were saying at least another seven, eight years for Dream of Spring? At least, because reason is out of the equation. Because it, it would stand to reason that once he figured out the Marinese knot, once he had all his pieces in places for a dance of dragons, right? And that, because that's what made the wait so long, the Marinese knot and getting everybody where they needed to be. So you're saying, all right, so the, the hard part's over now. You have them in place. Now you just write the rest of your story. But now it's fucking seven years later. So you're lying about that too. You've written yourself into more corners. You, you're having trouble figuring other things out. Or you're just taking on too many jobs. So reason's out the door. If Winds of Winter somehow gets published this year, which he's all but confirmed it won't, but if somehow it does, that doesn't mean that he's going to have an easier time writing A Dream for Spring. If anything, it just means that the wait for A Dream for Spring will be even longer. I decided that, you know, I want to go on a book tour to meet all my fans. <laughs> Answer questions about A Song of Ice and Fire. Dude, we'll probably get a fucking Game of Thrones reboot series. <laughs> a reimagining of a Game of Thrones before we get a Dream of Spring. And I, and I hate to bring this up right now. I hate to bring this up right now, but he's, what, 68 years old? You know what? It has to be brought up. It has to be brought up. He's not, like, 68 years old and, like, fucking Jack LaLanne, you know? He's, like, 68 years old and, like, like oh, I'm in New York. Gotta get some New York pizza. <laughs> like, yeah, dude, I, lo- I, bro, I love pizza. But I know that the amount of pizza I eat, <laughs> I'm going to pay for it later on. He's not even like Keith Richards, where fucking he could just like, I could do all these drugs and drink all night and somehow he's still alive and, you know, looking like a skeleton. He's not one end of the spectrum or the other. He's like right in the fucking sweet spot of, you're going to die of a heart he's attack. He's not even trying. <laughs> God, man. I'm, I'm the last person to talk about weight problem and all that, but jeez. Yeah, you, you would think that he would... But you know what the difference is, John? And I'm not... Listen, I'm not commenting on, on your diet or anything. I'm not saying anything like that. But if you're saying that you think you eat the way George R. R. Martin does or you treat your body the way he does, fine if that's what you think. But the difference between you and George R. R. Martin is if you had created something that so many people love and so many people are chomping at the bit and waiting for you to finish, you would fucking finish it. And you would make that your priority to finish it because you owe it to those people who made you wealthy by buying what you started and are not finishing. Mm -hmm. He's wealthy because all these people bought these books, and because of that, he's able to be more wealthy because of the TV show, and because of that, he's able to be more wealthy because of his fucking stupid-ass back catalog. Like, Night Flyers, a TV show about vampires, a TV show about a, a, a werewolf, a TV show about fucking whatever. Like, who gives a shit? This shit's all been done before. Like, A Song of Ice and Fire, that's your baby. That's what you should be focused on. That is your masterpiece, and you are wealthy because of it, and you're wealthy because of the people that bought it. When Game of Thrones came out, he wasn't like a fucking New York Times bestselling author. He wasn't, but he was because he wrote something great, and people loved it, and they wanted more, and those are the people that he owes a end to this story to, and he's let them all down. He's not our bitch, but you know what? He does owe us something. He does owe us something. He does. I'm still waiting for another email from another not a blog. Guys, listen, uh, I thought I should come out here today. You know, you know, it's been a while since I really talked about the son of Kong. Right, the son of Kong. I know you really want some good news, but I gotta be honest with this. And there is gonna be no good news. You're not gonna like what I have to say, but I'm gonna say it anyway. And believe me, it, it took like four days to write this. Four full days of writing it took me to write that I didn't finish The Wizard of Winter. Well, on the positive front, he says there's going to be no more sample chapters, so that must mean that he's nearing the end, and he's still talking about it. He said, it doesn't mean that he has any credibility, but he said that <laughs> The Wizard of Winter will come out after Fire and Blood. Uh, I mean, those are really the only positives. Everything else is negative, man. And it comes out, it doesn't come out. Our enjoyment of it is greatly reduced because of his sloth and his inability to push through writer's block, his inability to focus on the task at hand, his inability to prioritize what's really important. I think that I've said this already. I think it's 100% accurate. 
his obituary would have said, George R. R. Martin, the American J.R.R. Tolkien, the man who brought fantasy science fiction back into the mainstream, the author of Song of Ice and Fire, the greatest American fantasy series ever, dies at age whatever. That's what his obituary would have been, but it seems more likely that his obituary will be George R. R. Martin dead. Now, at least we know for sure, we'll never get The Winds of Winter. It's like a joke. It's like he made himself a joke. He's so rich, maybe he's laughing all at us all the way to the bank. I'm like, yeah, well, whatever you think of me, I'm fucking super wealthy. But there's a point, the guy's got no kids. So there's a point where enough is enough with wealth. How much wealth can you have before you can't even spend all the money? And like I say, he's got no kids to leave it to. So what is he going to do with all the money when he's gone? Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'll just keep going to fucking, what's the stupidest, uh, the, uh, the Hugo Awards. <laughs> <laughs> It's the Hugos. I'm going to make it so that it's Hugo Awards every month. Fucking releasing these long ass posts about like Hugo Award voting rules. And come on, dude. Ugh. I know we talked about this before. But, like the motherfuckers that comment on not a blog. Like they're actually interested in the Hugo Awards or wild cards. Oh, that's great, George. Have fun on your trip to fucking whatever. In my opinion, this story should win the Hugo Award, George. Murmur, murmur, murmur. <laughs> like, you just fucking with their head shoved up his ass. Anybody had any balls, everybody on Not a Blog should comment, where the fuck is the book? Right? Can you imagine it? the next stupid ass post he puts out that has nothing to do with anything if everybody that read Not a Blog commented, where is the winds of winter? Right? That should be the movement. That should be the rebellion. Get everybody, all these fucking. Guys with their with their fucking nose up his ass to fucking tell him how they really feel. Maybe then we'd get the book to come out. You know, he always has his protectors, though, too. It comes like, George, don't listen to them, George. Yeah. You right, take your right. time. Right. I can wait. I'd rather have a quality book than, than have a book right now. Okay, asshole. It doesn't matter how good the book is if you already know the goddamn ending of the book, right? And then think about those poor bastards that work at Bantam Books. Think about his editor at Bantam Books, right? His agent. Think about his agent, right? Because his agent gets paid on, on a commission of the book sales. So his poor agent, his literary agent, who gets nothing from Game of Thrones, the TV show, his poor literary agent is taking a huge, huge, huge pay cut because of his inability to focus, inability to finish this fucking book. And you know what? Maybe the blame's on them because they should have sent out people to keep him focused, to lock the fucking door, turn off the TVs, Tell him football season's been canceled and just to write the fucking book. All right, George, 9 a.m., time to get up and write. All right, George, 12.30, time to take a half hour for lunch. All right, George, lunch time's over. You can go fucking take a dump for 20 minutes and then it's back on the writing. All right, George, 6 o'clock, you can stop writing now. What did, what did you finish today? Two page. You finished two pages. All right, George, tomorrow we're going to stay in here longer and you're going to have to finish a lot more than two pages. He needs some tough love. and Not even some tough love. He needs somebody... They're saying, listen, motherfucker, we gave you all this money up front. You owe us a book. Listen, motherfucker, if you don't get this book out before Game of Thrones is done, he's out of a job. This guy's out of a job. I take a huge pay cut and we can't afford that. So you're going to sit in this room until you finish the book. He needs Kathy Bates from Misery is what George R. R. Martin needs. Mm -hmm. But everybody just wants to like, well, it's all right, George. You know, it's okay. You know, you're, you're the artist, George. You take your time. We don't want you to, to put out something that you're not proud of. Dude, what are you fucking kidding me? Like, have you seen a shitty episode of Game of Thrones? Yeah, the shitty episodes of Game of Thrones. At this point, it's a race against the clock. You're going to get the sales. So just put out what you got. Give us something. Jesus. <laughs> was it you that told me about... It was you that told me about the possibility of the final scene being Sam as he's... Oh, like, there, there's something like... Yeah, there, there's some, there was like... Um, I don't know if it was a, a, another one of these plot leaks or something or another that went out and supposedly the last... The very last scene of the um, of the show is going to be Sam telling the story to like a kid, his kid, or like a grandkid, or something like you know, whomever you know. And Sam is not going to be played by John Randall; it's going to be played by George R. R. Martin. Bro, if that is the fucking last scene of oh, Game dude, of Thrones, I die. You got to look at that fat motherfucker's face winking at the fucking camera, hamming it up while his books are still unpublished. Dude, I, I will I, listen. I'll, I'll kill him. I'll fucking kill him. I will kill him. That's how you're going to end things. You know, I might, I might even fucking 
take out Benioff and Weiss for making such a stupid decision. This dude should have nothing. He should have nothing to do with the final episodes. It'd be one thing if you got the Winds of Winter out and it's like, all right, you know what? Obviously, you're not going to get a Dream of Spring out before. Let you write. You know what? Why don't you write the final episode? I somewhat disagree. I, I, I would have been cool with him writing the last episode. Not me, bro. I, if he got the Winds of Winter out, I would have. At this point, they don't owe him anything because their work has made him twice as much money as he'll ever make. I get it because his episodes are generally really good because he knows the characters so well. But I think at this point, Benioff and Weiss seem like they know the characters a lot better than George R. R. Martin. This is their show. They got here. They got to a place where George R. R. Martin may possibly never get to, and that's an ending to this story. And I don't want him, I don't want anything to do with him with season eight. It's over, man. And I'll never get to a point where I don't buy The Winds of Winter. I don't even think I'll get to a point where I don't buy any of this supplementary bullshit. So maybe I'm to blame too, because I'll buy Fire and Blood. And I don't know what that says about me. It's painful that I don't get an end to the story and that somebody else finishes the end to the story, but I still keep coming back for more Westeros fiction. I love the property so much. I just love the world. So I don't know what that says about me. Maybe I'm, I'm as big a culprit because I keep buying the shit that he puts out. I don't know. Hey, what else you got on this asshole? I, don't, I, I think that's it. I think we've covered it. Uh, and he's just, I don't know. It's just so upsetting. It really is. It's just upsetting. There was a time in my life and I'll, I'll, I'll end with this. There was a time in my life when I was working a certain job and I hated it, but I had to work it. During that time, I was listening to Roy Dotrys during my commute, listening to him read Song of Ice and Fire. And one of the only things that kept me going was the thought of the day the Winds of Winter would be released and the thought of being in line at Barnes & Noble, me and you hanging out, right, right, right. Or, or, or wherever, just waiting for this book to come out and getting it at midnight and having like a week off from work and plowing through it. And that thought kept me going. And I don't even think of that anymore. And I think about if and when it's released. And it's hard for me to even be excited about it. I don't get me wrong. There's moments throughout the course of a year where I'm like, oh man, I, I wish it would come out. I, I really want to read it. But those are fewer and farther between. It's just sad to me. It's sad to me that an artist could create something that can get so many people through difficult times in their life, and then at the same time, basically turn his back on those people for what he thinks are greener pastures. When it's obvious to everybody that money's real nice, but you've ruined your legacy. Your footnote in history will be the butt of a joke and not what it should have been, what it could have been if you just focused or if somebody that was working with you could have gotten you the focus. Well, hopefully George R. R. Martin hears this and it inspires him to yeah. do something. I don't know. I'll let these guys wait any longer. It's not really fair. It's difficult to write these books. <laughs> you gotta understand that I'm a gardener. I'm not an architect. And the tale grew in the telling, as J.R.R. Tolkien would say. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. We always appreciate it. You can find us facebook.com slash The Promised Princes. Find us on Twitter at Princes Promise. You can read our Tumblr, which is really just an extension of our Facebook and Twitter, but that's the princes that were promised.tumblr.com. Check out the Westerosi companion at the princes that were promised.com. Please subscribe, leave a review wherever you get your podcasts Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store, Stitcher. You can even find us on SoundCloud if that's your cup of tea. Leave a review so that other listeners can find the princes that were promised. John, always a pleasure. We will speak with you guys next time.